Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to another edition of Crimes of the Week International. Representatives from the Tokyo Metropolitan Police say that a 40-year-old man is in serious trouble this week after he was caught trying to get out of paying his cab fare and instead of owning up to it, allegedly decided to double down on the crime. According to reports, the whole thing started just before midnight on September 13th when the suspect, 40-year-old Manabu Sato, was traveling in a taxi in Tokyo's Adachi ward. Upon getting to a specific street, Sato asked the 70-year-old driver to stop, who pulled over. As soon as he did, Sato allegedly tried to get out without paying the 2,900 yen or approximately 20 US dollar fare. Understandably, this prompted an argument between the two men, with Sato saying that he simply wasn't going to pay. That's when things apparently escalated. When the elderly driver attempted to stop Sato from leaving, the 40-year-old reportedly pushed him to the ground. He then proceeded to get into the driver's side of the taxi and took off. Fortunately for the driver, it didn't take police long to track his vehicle down. They found it parked on the side of the road about 40 minutes later, less than two miles away from where the altercation took place. When police arrived, Sato was apparently sleeping on a sidewalk a few feet away. If it wasn't already clear, police say they believe Sato was drunk at the time of this incident. When they woke him up, he claimed he couldn't remember what had happened. According to reports, the 40-year-old was arrested and is now facing charges of assault and theft of a vehicle. Officials in Malaysia are warning their citizens about the dangers of shady moneylenders this week after a family was terrorized after falling victim to a Singaporean loan shark scam. According to reports, the family's ordeal started back in May when the husband, Kwan, a 29-year-old baker from the province of Pahang, saw a Facebook ad for a loan service company based out of Singapore. He clicked on the ad and reached out to the supposed business, inquiring about borrowing 10,000 Singaporean dollars, or about $7,300 US. Kwan ultimately decided not to go through with the loan. However, by that point, it was too late. The scammers had all of Kwan's information, and they were demanding 2,000 Singaporean dollars, or 1,400 bucks, as a quote, cancellation fee. Initially, Kwan and his wife Chong reportedly tried to pay some of the money, hoping that it would make the criminals go away. Instead, though, they allegedly doubled down, saying that they owed more money and that they had never received any of Kwan's previous payments. When Kwan and Chong refused to hand over any more cash, the scammers reportedly escalated things in an even more terrifying way. On two separate occasions, on September 11th and 15th, their home was targeted by arsonists, the couple say they know that the crimes were connected because on September 17th, they received a call from the scammers who not only took credit for the fires, but said that they now owed them an additional 3,000 Singaporean dollars as a fee for the arsonist services. Kwan and Chong say that the criminals have not let up since these attacks and have even threatened to kidnap their two children. As a result, both children were pulled out of school, and Kwan and Chong say that they have also quit their jobs out of fear for their safety. While police are investigating the situation, it's unclear what, if any, progress has been made in the case. All authorities have been able to say so far is that the group harassing Kwan and Chong are based out of Singapore, and that they specifically target Malaysian victims. Authorities in the English county of Essex say that a 35-year-old woman has been charged with the murder of her parents this week, following a chilling discovery on their property. According to reports, the situation began on September 13th, when police in the city of Chelmsford received a welfare check request for married couple John and Lois McCullough. It's unclear who made this request, though it's said that authorities quickly became concerned after learning that the last confirmed sighting of the elderly husband and wife was all the way back in August of 2018. During a search of the couple's home on Pump Hill, things apparently took a dark turn when human remains were discovered on the property. While they have yet to be officially identified, police now believe these are the remains of John and Lois. On September 15th, their daughter, 35-year-old Virginia McCullough, was arrested and charged with their murders. At the time of this recording, few additional details have been released about the case. We do not know how or why the couple were allegedly murdered, nor even how long the bodies were concealed, as police have simply said so far that the crime happened sometime between August 21, 2018 and September 15, when Virginia was arrested. 
Detectives say that they are still at the home processing evidence and that they anticipate a complex investigation going forward. The situation is still developing. Authorities in the Australian Capital Territory say that a 24-year-old man is facing a number of charges this week after he allegedly carried out a terrifying attack at his former university. The incident began at around 2.40 p.m. on September 18th when police were called to Australian National University in the city of Canberra with reports that several people had been attacked on the campus. Officers arrived to find four people suffering from injuries, all of whom were students. Among them were two 20-year-old women who had each been stabbed multiple times. Not long after, police arrested the person allegedly responsible for the crime, a 24-year-old man named Alex Ophel, who is said to be a former student. It's now alleged that Ophel entered the campus that afternoon, where he attacked a male victim with a frying pan. He then chased and stabbed the two female victims, later identified as Alicia Perry and Isabel Vasadeva, near the school library before punching the final male victim in the face. It's said that one of the stabbing victims is in serious but stable condition at a local hospital, while the other is in stable condition. It's believed that Ophel did not know any of the victims. At the time of this recording, no motive has been officially released behind the disturbing attack, though local media sources have stated that Ophel was known to police prior to this week's incident and has a history of mental health issues. At least one source we came across alleged that this is not the first violent incident the 24-year-old has been involved in, and that in fact, he was arrested for another attack on the ANU campus back when he was a student there. In that case, Ophel allegedly attacked a tutor and four of his classmates with a baseball bat during a statistics class. He was reportedly arrested and charged over the incident, though was found not guilty by reason of mental impairment. Following Ophel's arrest this week, he was charged with two counts of attempted murder, two counts of assault, and one count of possessing an object to be used to kill. At the current time, officials say that they are still investigating what transpired in the lead-up to the attack and whether there were any lapses in supervision or oversight within the territory's mental health system that may have been a contributing factor. In the meantime, it's said that security will be ramped up on the ANU campus. Authorities in the Indian Capital Territory of Delhi say that a local government worker found a novel use for one of his personal days recently when he allegedly took the day off so he could plan and carry out the murder of his boss. According to reports, it all started last month when the suspect, identified only by the name Anish, submitted a request for some time off at his job as an office clerk with Survey of India, the government's national surveying and mapping organization. The request was approved, with everyone likely assuming Anish just needed a little break. As it turned out, though, he wasn't exactly planning a spa day. Instead, when Anisha's personal day rolled around on August 28th, police say that he spent the morning traveling to a local market where he purchased a 6 by 6 foot polyethylene sheet and shovel. A few hours later, he invited his boss, 42-year-old Mahesh Kumar, to his home, where he allegedly proceeded to beat him to death with a pipe wrench. He then buried Kumar in a shallow grave in his courtyard, which he covered with concrete. All of this was apparently uncovered on September 2nd, after Kumar was reported missing and authorities uncovered his remains on Anisha's property. He was arrested and currently remains in custody. According to local media, Anish planned and carried out the crime because his boss made advances towards his girlfriend and also owed him the equivalent of about $11,000 US, which he was allegedly refusing to pay. The situation is still under investigation. Officials in the Filipino capital region of Metro Manila say that an airport security worker is under investigation this week following a bizarre recent incident in which he allegedly robbed a traveler, then tried to cover up the crime by eating the evidence. According to reports, the whole thing went down on the morning of September 8th when the victim, a Chinese national identified only by the name Kai, was passing through a baggage check area at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport. While waiting for his belongings to come through, Kai apparently spotted a female security guard that seemed to be acting suspiciously. After checking his bags, she appeared to be holding something tightly in her left hand, which she then moved to one of her pant pockets. 
concern that something had happened, Kai immediately went through his things when he got them back. To his horror, he realized that three US $100 bills were now missing from his bags. Kai immediately informed other members of security what he believed had happened, but was apparently told that there was no evidence backing up what he was saying. The female security guard, meanwhile, denied that anything had happened. It wasn't until a few days later that Kai was finally vindicated when he received a call from additional security staff from the airport. They said that they had reviewed surveillance footage and had indeed found video suggesting that the female guard had stolen from him. There was just one problem. She had eaten the evidence. According to reports, the surveillance video shows the moments after Kai accused the female worker of stealing from him. In the footage, she can be seen looking nervous before her friend hands her a bottle of water and she walks away from the baggage check area. She then turns around, rolls up the bills, and puts them in her mouth before using the water to help her swallow them. What the security worker didn't realize was that when she had turned around, she had actually turned right in the direction of one of the airport's security cameras. While it seems like Kai probably won't be getting his money back, officials say that they are continuing their investigation into the female suspect and that she and any others involved will face the maximum charges possible. Authorities in the Thai capital of Bangkok say that they have arrested a 25-year-old man and released another this week after a man allegedly used his friend's ID to get out of legal trouble three years ago, and the situation finally caught up with him. According to reports, the whole thing started back on August 23, 2020, when the suspect, identified only by the name Puadon, was stopped at a police checkpoint because he was driving a car without registration plates. Things got even more serious when he tested positive for drugs, at which point police placed him under arrest. Realizing that he was facing jail time, it was at this point that Puadon evidently got an idea. When asked for his identification, he said they had forgotten it at home and gave police the name of his friend Anusha instead. The next day, Puadon was bailed out of jail by his mother, who had somehow apparently obtained a copy of Anusha's ID. Puadon was released and was issued a court date, which he promptly skipped out on. He then reportedly underwent plastic surgery so that he could be less recognizable if authorities ever caught up with him again. For about three years, not much happened. That was until June 13th, when cops showed up at Anusha's work and placed the very confused 25-year-old under arrest. For nearly the next three months, Anusha sat in jail charged with drug offenses and failing to appear in court, the whole time telling police that they had the wrong guy. However, his pleas fell on deaf ears. It wasn't until September 10th, when his family reached out to a non-profit organization that agreed to help, that authorities realized that they'd been duped and that they had seriously messed up. Six days after Anusha's release, Pudon was finally arrested for the crime. At the time of this recording, he remains in custody, while authorities say they are currently discussing compensation with the Ministry of Justice for the time Anusha wrongfully spent locked up. Officials in Poland say that a 54-year-old father and his 20-year-old daughter are each facing multiple charges this week following the chilling discovery of human remains at their home, as well as horrifying accusations that they were involved in a murderous and incestuous relationship. According to local media sources, for years, residents of the small northern village of Chernitsky have thought that something strange was going on at the home of 54-year-old Pyotr Jurasik. Pyotr and his wife Hannah moved into their tiny one-story home in the village approximately 20 years ago with their 12 children. At first, they apparently seemed like a normal family. However, as time went on, it became clear that something was wrong. Piotr could often be heard yelling and screaming inside the house, and soon, Hannah's health began to visibly decline. She lost weight rapidly, her hair fell out, and eventually people stopped seeing her altogether. A little while later, in September of 2008, neighbors learned that she had died at the age of just 38 and had been buried at the local cemetery. After Hannah's death, other alarming things were noticed about the family. In particular, it seemed like Piotr might have an unusual relationship with some of his daughters. According to reports, these concerns were taken to police at least as far back as eight years ago, when one of the daughters, who appeared to be pregnant with twins, disappeared from the village for a period of time. When she returned, there were no children. 
An investigation was launched, but officials said there was insufficient evidence that anything illegal had happened. In fact, the person who first made the accusations was allegedly forced to apologize to Piotr. Eventually, the daughter who was pregnant reportedly left the village altogether, and from that point on, Piotr was seen exclusively with another one of his daughters, Paulina. According to reports, Piotr and Paulina seemed much more like a couple than father and daughter. Paulina apparently called her father by his first name, they were often seen walking hand in hand together, and during their rare outings to local shops, had even been overheard calling each other darling. Evidently learning from the first time they had taken their concerns to police, though, for the longest time, no one said anything. That apparently changed, however, when colleagues of Paulina's at the cake shop where she worked noticed dramatic changes in her physical appearance. She went from wearing baggy clothes that didn't seem to fit her to losing a ton of weight seemingly overnight. They began to suspect that she had been pregnant, but there was a problem. Paulina denied ever being pregnant, and there didn't seem to be any sign of a baby. The horrifying truth about what allegedly happened was finally uncovered earlier this month when police conducted an investigation at Piotr and Paulina's home. There, in the basement of the rundown structure, they found the remains of not one, but three infants. Authorities now believe that Piotr and Paulina were engaged in a years-long incestuous relationship, one that may have produced more than one child. It's alleged that they murdered the infants. As if things couldn't get more disturbing, police say they are now investigating whether some of the remains belong to the children of some of Piotr's other daughters, who he may have previously had relations with. It appears that they are also looking into whether there might have been other victims, including his late wife, whose sudden death many have questioned for years. At the time of this recording, Piotr and Paulina are each facing multiple charges of murder and incest. If convicted, they could both be looking at life in prison. The situation is still developing. Before we wrap up, we'd like to take a second to give a huge shout out to everyone who has made it this far into the video. Seriously, thank you so much for watching. If you found today's upload interesting and informative, we'd be honored if you consider liking and subscribing, as well as hitting the notification bell and selecting all notifications to stay up to date with our latest releases. If you're looking for additional ways to help support the channel, we'd love to have you join us over on Patreon. Patrons get ad-free and early access to all of our content, as well as four additional stories per week for each of our Crimes of the Week and Crimes of the Week International videos. You can learn more at patreon.com slash crimezone, where you'll also find some of the fine folks whose names are currently on screen. All that being said, we understand that not everyone has the means to support financially, and that's totally okay. We appreciate every like, sub, share, and comment that you send our way. Once again, thanks so much everyone, and take care.